This is the new Tesla Model Y, and it is effectively a Tesla Model 3 that's been like stretched in Photoshop. Now really, look, I've stretched the Model 3 in Photoshop. Looks the same. Anyway, in this video, I'm gonna talk you around the exterior, the interior, I'm gonna explain its tech, see how practical it is, and of course, I'm gonna take it for a drive. I will even launch it from 0 to 60 miles an hour because I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching CarWow. Let's start this video by talking about the design of the Model Y. So like a Model 3, but taller. Though it does have a hatchback, so it's quite slopey at the rear end. Here at the side, wheel sizes start at 19 inches, rising to 20 for the long range, but they go all the way up to 21 on the performance model. One thing about the performance, it has low suspension, which could be good to fill this kind of gappy wheel arch. Down the side, actually quite like the profile of it. It looks all right, and you've got like the classic Tesla poppy out your door handles like that with the black on them and black window surrounds down the sides yeah just classic tesla face really isn't it it's just a bit bigger more upright than the model 3 and it's randomly flashing its lights at me because it's a tesla and it's alive now the starting pr don't know what that was all about anyway the starting price of this car is fifty-five thousand pounds here on the inside, the design is just like a Model 3, so very minimalist, got a wide expanse of dash, big screen in the middle where you control absolutely everything, not just the sat nav, your infotainment system, but all climate controls and absolutely everything for the car, which is a good thing in some ways because it keeps things simple in terms of button clutter, but sometimes it can be a bit of a faff to get through stuff. That said, the infotainment system is fast, it's responsive, and it's nice and crisp. Then you got the usual quality of Tesla, which I actually think is pretty decent, like the perceived quality. What I can't be so sure of is whether it's gonna to start to fall apart, you know, a little bit quicker than a comparative car, say, from Audi. BMW or Mercedes. As for practicality, once again, it's like a Model 3. So you've got big door bins, you've got storage under here, loads of it. You've got just two pads there for your wireless charging of your mobile phones, more storage under here, some cup holders, the glove box, which you have to open through the screen, or you can just do this, please work. Open glove box. There you go. Yeah decent size glove box. The thing that is different to the Model 3 is the fact that obviously you're sitting up higher. It doesn't feel quite as sporty because you, you sit more on this car. You've still got the big windscreen, great view out and even better view out because you're a little bit higher up and the seating position is nice. The seats in the Tesla are very comfortable. I like them. It's good. The main benefit you get with this car over the Model 3 is the space in the back. Now for starters, one of the problems with the Model 3 is that the seat feels quite close to the floor so you don't have much under thigh support. You feel a little bit like in a stress position. Not in this one. You feel more like it's a proper seat. Also, look at this. These front seats are jacked up quite a bit so you can really stretch out. That's awesome. And you can recline these seat backs a bit as well. Really is comfy and roomy in the back. Headroom is good as well. It's nice that you've got this glass roof. So it lets lots of light back here. Knee room's really good. And because you've got a flat floor and lots of space there, the middle seat is pretty comfy as well. Liking that, more so liking this. Come on, come on. There we go, we've got an armrest here. It's just a shame that they don't cover that so you end up putting your elbow in it. But look at this for some through loading. It's really wide. I'll say it again, it's really wide. <laughs> They're good, that is. Liking this. What is a bit of a faff though, look, it's the isofix points. They're just a bit hard to get because you just have to wedge the isofix bars in between the seats. Be better if it had flip up covers. However, it is easy to fit a child seat in here, but yeah, you do end up spending some time to actually get the Isofix anchor points attached. Then once you've done it once, you're gonna leave your seat in there, aren't you? And there's plenty of room for even a big, bulky rear facing seat. There's also a couple of USB-C ports there as well. Overall, I'm very impressed with the back seats on this car, it's good. Now let's talk about boot space, starting with the front boot, the fruit. Look. It's massive, 117 litres of space. It's crazy to think that some German manufacturers can't even figure out how to create any space at all underneath the bonnets of their electric cars. And then there's the boot at the back, which is even bigger. Well, of course it's gonna be bigger, it's the rear boot. But would you expect it to be almost eight times bigger? The capacity here, including this underfloor storage, 854 litres, which is insane. And if you need more space, look, obviously you fold down the seats and you can do it electrically by those releases. And look, you have a completely flat floor. Really good. Apart from the fact there's no tie down points at all. And that brings you on to five annoying things about the Tesla Model Y. Here we have a man in the boot. Now that's not the bad thing. The bad thing is the fact that you don't get a parcel shelf 
with this Tesla Model Y. Now the man is there to illustrate that, look, we have an iPhone there. And yes, Tesla does give you rear privacy glass, but if you look in like that, you can see the iPhone. Look, there it is, there's the iPhone. I think I'm gonna smash this glass and take the goodies within. I'm talking about the phone, not the man. It's a bit of an oz that while you can just activate the windscreen wipers once by doing that. If you want to change the speed of them, you have to actually go onto this screen here. Another thing that's annoying is if you want to suddenly alter the mirrors, you have to go into the car settings and press that button and then use this to alter the mirrors rather than going straight for a little knobby there and doing it quickly. If ever a car needed a heads up display, it's the Tesla Model Y because the only place you can see the speed is by taking your eyes off the road and looking on the central infotainment screen. Why don't they make one available for it? It's just stupid. There's only one standard colour with a Tesla Model Y, and that's white. So if you don't like that, you're going to have to pay extra for a different colour. And they are rather expensive. Like this red. It may look nice, but it costs £2,100 extra. The reason to get a Model Y over a Model 3 is for the added practicality for families. Now, in other parts of the world, you can get a seven-seater version of this car, but not in the UK, not for now. And Tesla hasn't even confirmed if we're going to get it. So if you need to carry more than five people, you're going to have to sit them in the boot, which isn't ideal in an electric car with instant performance because you'll accelerate and all of a sudden they'll go whoop. It's not all negative, though. Here's five good things about this car. One of Tesla's USPs is that you have access to its excellent supercharger network. And another thing is, when you program in a destination in the sat-nav, it'll work out your route via various superchargers, so you can always get there with enough charge. One of the good things about Teslas is that they come fully loaded. There are very few options, I think, other than the paint, the wheel size is a tow hitch, slightly different interior trim. Oh, and the advanced autopilot and summon feature, which actually, the hardware is fit for in the car anyhow, so if you wanted to fit that at a later date, you can just do an over-the-air update, simple. All Teslas come with a dog mode, so you can leave your dog in the car and it'll maintain the temperature that's safe for the dog. And it also leaves a little sign on the digital display so that if anyone walks past and gets a bit worried for the dog, they can see how long you're going to be leaving it in the car for so they don't need to call the RSPCA to get you arrested. While you're charging your car, you can do things like go on YouTube or Netflix. Go watch some shows, maybe a bunch of box sets, whatever. Because Elon is a real fun guy, as part of the software update, you can now have weird things added to your horn. So one of them is a fart sound. So, yeah, of course. Another one is, I don't know, a goat. It doesn't sound like a goat. And oh, my favorite is this. Oh, the lols. But if you want more lols, you can actually add your own via USB. So here's some I've done. Get out of my way, you moron. That's appropriate. Here's another one. Oh, hello, sexy face. Here's another one. What's the matter with you? You need to learn to drive. And my favourite, the classic. Make up a pop out banner to get a car wag. There are two versions of the Tesla Model Y. There's the long range, which has two electric motors and 384 horsepower, or there's the performance, which also has two motors, but 450 horsepower. Now, both cars come with a 70 kilowatt hour battery pack, and the maximum range that you can get out of the Tesla Model Y is 315 miles. All right, let's see what this Tesla Model Y is like to drive. So the first thing I'm noticing on this slightly bumpy road is that the suspension is a little bit firmer than I'd expect. It seems firmer than in the Model 3. And that's probably because it's taller and heavier. And so it has to have stiffer springs to stop it leaning so much in the bends. Weird though, is that the steering feels just as quick as in the Model 3, yet because it's a bigger, heavier car, it just doesn't respond for the rest of the turn quite as well. So it's got like this false sporty feeling. Mm. That said, this car does still go around corners okay, and it has that real point and squirt feeling that you get from Teslas, and obviously you've got four-wheel drive traction, so it can always put its power down without getting in too much of a mess. However, maybe it's better at low speed, so we're going into town now, and first thing I'm noticing is, yeah, regen's really good on this, so I lift off the accelerator, it's really good for stopping, which is handy when you're going past a lollipop lady and she's stopped it to let the kids across the road. So you're regening energy really well when you're coming to a standstill if you're controlling it on the throttle. However, if you need to use the normal brakes and you hit the brake pedal hard, one of the good things about this car is that the brakes feel really, really natural, just like in a normal internal combustion engine car. Whereas with some other EVs, like the feel of the brake pedal is just a bit odd. Not in Teslas though, Teslas are always good. I tell you what Teslas are also good at, and that's all around visibility. Really, really nice. So some other electric SUVs, while you sit up high, you don't get a really good view forward. 
but this low dash means that visibility is great forward, it's great out the side. It's not so good out the back though. No, no, but I can forgive that because I can press a button here and just like look <laughs> on the screen. And that's standard. Do you know what? I'd probably stick with the standard wheels because filling this go over bumps, it's a bit jarring at times. Another thing I've noticed is that because you've got no parcel shelf, when you go over a bump, you get noise from the suspension sort of reverberating around the cabin. It's a bit annoying. And when you're going faster at speeds, you get a bit more wind whistle. In fact, the car seems to act a little bit like a, an echo chamber because it's just so big and spacious in here. But when you're on the motorway, one of the good things about it is Tesla's cruise control system. So as standard, you get a system that will basically hook you up to the lane and auto steer to keep you in lane. And it will also brake and accelerate for you to keep your safe distance from the car in front. And you can upgrade that further. So you can do things like change lane for you if you need to overtake and all that kind of stuff. It's a very, very good system. As for maneuverability, well, when you get around normal roundabouts this size, it's fine, this car. Oh, although people do still like to pull out in front of you because they can't quite believe that you might want to go the way from which you just came. That's another good thing about this car. So if you have an accident, the all-round cameras are constantly recording. So you can download that footage and then you can use that to send to your insurance company. Look at this, right? Spotting that car there on the curb as well. Look at that. Always keeping you safe. Always got its eyes out, helping you out this car as. What's not helping you is the turning circle. So it's over 12 meters. Now I'm going to try and go around this mini roundabout and see if I can go all the way around in one go. No, look, I've already cocked this up. No, no, this is going to be chaos. Sorry, I was never going to make that. People are going to hate me. Yes, they're hating. There's a lot of hate. There's a lot of, there's, there's going to be more hate now. Sorry, there's more hate coming for me. More hate, some more hate, please. Yes, you hate me because I'm in a Tesla and you hate me because I can't go round a mini roundabout without having to do a 10 point turn. Oh, it's not so good. One thing you can't fault Tesla's for is their performance. So this long range version of the Model Y is supposed to do 0 to 16 4.8 seconds. But I'm gonna see all my specialist timing gear up here. Gonna launch it, let's do it. Yeah, it feels quick. I only just build the power does, seamless. 4.95, slightly slower than claimed, but quicker than the high performance version of the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and Kia EV6. And this is the slower Model Y. Yeah, if you get the performance version, it's supposed to do 0 to 16 in 3.5 seconds. If it's a bit slow like this one, it'll be 3.65 seconds. Actually, do you know what? I'm going to give it another go. So, launch number two. Can you actually do the claim time this time? Yes, 4.8 seconds. That's better. No lies. So then what's my final verdict on the Tesla Model Y? Should you avoid it, consider it, shortlist it, or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the Tesla Model Y. It's a really, really good electric SUV. It's just that it does face some pretty stiff competition.